Live from News Nation headquarters, this is News Nation Prime with Marnie Hughes. On the run, no more. Good evening, I'm Marnie Hughes. The woman wanted for murder in that deadly love triangle tonight has been captured. Caitlin Armstrong was on the run for nearly 50 days, traveling from Austin, Texas, after the murder of pro cyclist Mariah Mo Wilson, all the way to New York. And tonight, we have learned that Caitlin used a phony passport to fly to Costa Rica, where authorities took her into custody at a hostel, marking the end of what became an international fugitive hunt. Deputy U.S. Marshal Brandon Fila has been working this case closely. He will join us in just minutes to walk us through exactly what went down and where Caitlin is tonight. But first, correspondent Kelly Beeson joining us with the latest in this case and a capture that had the nation's attention. Yeah, it certainly has, Marnie. The U.S. Marshals say Caitlin Armstrong is now expected to be returned to the United States while she will face a murder charge. We spoke with a former CIA officer and FBI special agent to learn more about why she may have chosen Costa Rica. She is a yoga instructor. There are lots of yoga retreats um, that are in Costa Rica. And I think she's also fully aware of the fact that, you know, with a little bit of changing to her appearance, perhaps that's a place that she can blend in. It's my understanding that, you know, she was found with a bandage on her nose. So maybe she was already working towards that. A 43-day manhunt ends with the capture of yoga instructor Caitlin Armstrong on the run since May, wanted for murder. Armstrong was located in Costa Rica at a hostel on a beach bordering the Pacific Ocean. She was arrested on Wednesday for the murder of Mariah Wilson, otherwise known as Mo. I really put a really hard effort in at the end. Wilson, a professional cyclist, was found dead on May 11th after being shot in an East Austin, Texas home. According to an affidavit, Mo Wilson had previously dated Caitlin Armstrong's boyfriend, cyclist Colin Strickland, who has cooperated with investigators and is not a suspect in the case. Armstrong was questioned by police the very next day. However, a warrant for her arrest wasn't issued until May 17th, a few days after she had already fled the state. But in my mind, that's not enough of a head start to garner the fake passport, get the ticket to Costa Rica. So I, I really think there was a bit more premeditation there. Authorities said Armstrong sold her vehicle May 13th for about $12,000 and was spotted at an Austin airport on the 14th, where she flew to Houston, eventually connecting to New York City. She then used a fraudulent passport to fly from Newark, New Jersey to Costa Rica on May 18th, where she was taken into custody yesterday. A good fraudulent passport is difficult to get your hands on and it costs upwards of about $13,000. And from what I understand, she sold her Jeep for about $12,000, which is well below market value um, for that vehicle. So that's what I find really fascinating about all of this is how much planning um, went into place. Now, a former Homeland Security agent we spoke with says he expects Armstrong will be returned to the U.S. before the end of next month. And law enforcement officials have said anyone who may have assisted Armstrong will also be facing consequences. Marnie. All right, Kelly, thank you. Brandon Fila is a deputy U.S. Marshal. He has been working this case out of Austin, and he has been part of the key unit of investigators who have been on the hunt for Armstrong for more than a month now, and he has been regularly updating us on the case. Uh, Brandon, good to see you once again. You got her. How'd this all happen? Yeah, thanks for having us, Marty. Uh, this happened with the efforts that were conducted by the U.S. Marshal Service and the Lone Star Fugitive Task Force in combination with state, local, federal authorities, which then reached out to our international partners in Costa Rica. So it really started right here with the task force officers that day in and day out really uh, went 43 days hard uh, without, you know, forfeited their leave, their, their uh, holidays and their weekends because you know, they, they wanted to face the challenge. They wanted to be the difference uh, in this case. And uh, they continue to work day in and day out, uh, which really shows uh, our efforts that were, uh, you know, performed by Costa Rica officials yesterday when they gave us word that uh, she had been captured at that hostile uh, hotel. Hmm. How long had she been there? We don't know exactly how long she had been there, uh, but we do know, according to that flight itinerary, uh, that she put 
you know, feet on the ground in Costa Rica on May 18th. Uh, she stayed, you know, there in Costa Rica, San Jose. Uh, she moved around a little bit uh, based upon the information that we received from Costa Rica officials. Um, but I don't know exactly how long uh, that she was at that specific location. Uh, she frequented other places, yoga studios, uh, where we believe she was also trying to develop some type of skill to instruct a different type of yoga to really establish herself there uh, in Costa Rica. Had she changed her appearance, Brandon? Yeah, we had a brief conversation yesterday with the Costa Rica, uh, with Costa Rica and they said that uh, her appearance did change. Uh, she shortened her hair to about shoulder length. Uh, it was a dark brown color. Uh, and also she had some type of bandage on her nose with some, uh, you know, slight discoloration under her eyes. And uh, she told officials that uh, that was due to a uh, surfboard incident here recently. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's all the information that we have on her physical description where she admitted to uh, authorities there that uh, she's Caitlin Armstrong. Wow. Did she resist arrest at all? We don't know of any type of resistance. Again, I believe we received some type of compliance by, you know, she's saying that uh, she was Caitlin Armstrong and, you know, they, we were told that uh, it was physically evident. Uh, but uh, really for her, she changed her physical description. You know, I wouldn't think we'd get it that willingly, uh, but, uh, you know, she's distraught and, uh, you know, she's been on the run 43 days and I think she knew her days were counting and, uh, you know, we were able to uh, get her detained there in Costa Rica on um, an immigration violation and we'll wait for further word to where hopefully here we'll receive her, you know, next coming days uh, here in the United States. So she'll head back to Texas from Costa Rica. Yeah, she will eventually, uh, you know, be deported from Costa Rica and uh, our U.S. Marshals with the uh, international operations is working and communicating with them uh, to see when we know a date uh, to where we'll receive Caitlin Armstrong here in the U.S. We'll receive her and then extradite her back here to Austin, Texas, where she'll be in a court in Travis County to initiate those uh, judicial proceedings. What else can you tell us about this fraudulent passport she used? You know, that fraudulent passport is a passport that uh, it was it was active. It was valid. It, it belonged to someone else. Uh, it belonged to someone else that uh, had very similar physical descriptions of Caitlin Armstrong. So she was very easily able to get through you know, those types of obstacles uh, to where she boarded a flight uh, at Newark International Airport to Costa Rica. Um, and, you know, that was it with the assistance of other authorities like Homeland Security that uh, has access to specific databases and provided that to us. And, you know, we really had an advantage in this because our U.S. Marshals Investigation Operations Division uh, really expedited and streamlined everything uh, with, you know, um, Costa Rica officials uh, because we already had this this case, you know, upgraded to a major case status. So it really streamlined everything. And like I tell everyone here is it's kind of like going to a theme park and getting a fast pass. You really got to cut the line uh, in a hurry uh, so you can get to that destination. And, and that's exactly what we were able to do when we, you know, upgraded this to a major case. Yeah, it seemed to make all the difference. You and I have talked about it before, Brandon, whether or not she had help in trying to hide these last uh, 50 or so days. Who dropped her off at the airport in Newark on May 18th? You know, we, we still won't reveal that, that source, Marty. Uh, we still hold that confidentially. It's an ongoing investigation. Uh, she's not back here in the United States, uh, but there'll be a time and a place. I think that this will come out and it may come out and, you know, when she's there in court and some type of proceeding. Uh, but right now we got to protect that identity and, that, and that's what we you know say we would do uh but our ultimate goal was, was to get armstrong into custody and uh we've done that with the help of uh our international partners understood uh, for those who may have helped her along the way um, at any point um, recognizing her and not turning her in what types of consequences would people face um, for assisting you know they can they can face consequences of, of charges up from from five years to ten years, and then you got to depend on you know how many counts would they get for how many times did they really assist her. Uh, but really, truthfully, I mean we look at this case and you know she's questioned by authorities a day after the homicide. Uh, you know she goes from Austin to New York. She's there in New York for four days, but she doesn't have a warrant at that time. She gets the warrant, you know, on the seventeenth, uh, and catches a flight out of the country the following day. So a lot of the communication that she had or of assistance was probably maybe money or some types of communication. But we really feel that this whole 
you know, time of 43 days. We, we really, we didn't have her physically in custody, but she was beginning to lose that freedom. And she really had to develop a new lifestyle there in Costa Rica. And I think she went to her, her um, employment, previous employment um, and hobby of, you know, practicing yoga and trying to different, you know, trying to develop different types of yoga um, and really going under that alias that she used on that passport. Yeah, planning to continue to hide. Uh, finally, Brandon, this must have been a major sense of relief for the victim's family and all of those directly involved in this tragic case. Have you spoken with them? No, we haven't spoken with the family, and, and that's not nothing unusual. Uh, that'll probably be, you know, up to the Austin Police Department. They're the ones spearheading this invest this homicide investigation, so they'll they'll notify the family. Uh, but I can tell you here, uh, you know, our task force officers, the U.S. Marshal Service, everyone involved. You know, it was a uh, it was quite a celebration yesterday when we were able to uh, in this 43 day journey uh, going after a violent fugitive uh, like Armstrong. Caitlin Armstrong in custody tonight. Brandon Fila, Deputy U.S. Marshal, uh, we appreciate, as always, you coming on, giving us an update. Job well done to you and your team. And we thank you, Marty, for the coverage and really putting, you know, Armstrong's face out there to the public that generated a lot of assistance. You got it anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.